If you are anything like me, then you have spring cleaning fever and not just any spring cleaning fever, you have it Marie Kondo style. And we're gonna apply that to our brands and our businesses today because if it's not serving you now, like it did last year, it's time to thank it for its purpose and let it go. And I'm gonna teach you seven ways to spring clean your brand right now. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It is so nice to be back and I'm super excited about this spring weather that is happening right now. Last week we had snow and I thought I was going to have to just, I don't know, I don't even know what I was going to have to do because I was just so upset about the snow. I want spring to be here. I'm so ready for the warmer weather. And it got me thinking about, you know, spring cleaning and I was um, I spent yesterday doing some some deep scrubbing of the house and gosh, it just feels so much better today. It feels so much better today. I don't know about you guys, but I really like spring cleaning. It is such a good feeling. And now with folks like Marie Kondo who are out here, you know, sparking joy by letting things go, um, you know, it's really got me thinking about how we can spring clean our brands and our businesses. And so today I have seven ways for you to spring clean your brand. It can even be Marie Kondo style, right? KonMari method. Love her. I saw one episode of hers on Netflix and then we had actually already planned to unsubscribe. So just one episode of hers revolutionized my dresser drawers. I don't know about you guys, but I love her. I love her style. So anyways, back to cleaning up your brand. This is something that I think that we should all do at least once a year, if not once a quarter. I think that it's really great to take assessment and review and reflect on what's working and what's not in our brands, simply because our ideal clients are constantly changing and evolving. And if we are serving them well, and we are really you know, wanting to help them get results and benefits and their desires, I think that this is something we have to evaluate. And so this is not just for spring, but just for the fun of the theme, I said spring clean your brand. So let's get right to it, okay? So number one is to clean up your brand message, right? If we're not clear and clean and concise about our brand message, then we are not going to connect with our people. And so if you missed it, I just put out a post about um, how to fix your brand message in 60 seconds. And I gave you a little formula to work on that. And if you need that, I will link it um, after I've gone live here. But um, that is a very easy and simple thing to do to spring clean your brand or just to reevaluate it at any point in the year. Messaging is incredibly important for branding because it informs the rest of the brand identity, your visuals and your textures and your voice and your style, how you appeal to your people in a way that they find authentic and genuine and compels them to say yes to whatever it is that you're offering. Okay, here's number two. If you have any photos or visuals in your brand, um, it's time to freshen up your photos, right? Um, this is not something that I encourage people to put a ton of emphasis on at the beginning. Make sure you have a couple of good headshots um, and a, a couple of nice, clean photos of imagery. If some situations allow you to use stock photos, but if you're a personal brand, you're going to want to make sure that your personal photos are updated and fresh looking. And so you can go out with a friend, um, or it could be time for you to up level your business and go ahead and hire that professional for the afternoon and go out and get some headshots done around town, or maybe plan an event, make it fun, go out to a city and go out and get some, some shots there for your personal brand. So number three is to clarify your people's pain points. And so this is more for if like um, you're struggling with engagement, maybe you have a Facebook group or your audience on Instagram is not as responsive. 
and you're hearing crickets, it's time to do some investigating and get clear on what are people actually struggling with and what are people actually responding to? Ask some questions. I have a post on three places you can do market research. It's really easy to do. You can go out and implement some of these things today. I'll also link that post as well, but I really want you guys to have resources available to you because this is these are essential and foundational parts that we're cleaning up in our brand today. Okay, so step one, clean up your brand message. Two, freshen up your photos. Three, clarify your people's pain points. Number four, once you're starting to get clarity around those things, it's time to clean up your website. It's time to freshen that baby up. And so make sure that um, there are no broken links. Um, make sure your homepage is still relevant. And is your copy outdated? Is that something that you were offering a while ago or have you not updated your prices on your website to reflect your new value based on the experience that you've acquired over the years or with clients? You know, it is time to make sure those terms and conditions are still up to date. Have you updated the date on your privacy policy? Those are little things that people will notice that will say, mm, this person is not really paying attention to this. They're not detail oriented. I don't want to work with them. Or says this person's on it and they've been in business since this long through this, like, you know, the little copyright thing at the bottom of people's PDFs or their worksheets or their website. People notice those things. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone in to do a brand assessment and I've been like, Hey, this link is broken. This button is broken. Where does this link go? Because it's not working or it went to an error page. Did you change up the link and forget to reconnect it? So make sure that all of your links are still working and functional. And if you have a VA, this is something that they can very easily go through and do an inventory and assessment. Is everything working the way that it's supposed to? All right. Now, number five, clean up your email list, your newsletter list, whatever you want to call it, but your list of people. It's time to clean it out, clean it up, get those cold subscribers off of there. Here's why that matters. One, it's just an encouraging thing to see your open rates go up, your engagement rates go up, because when you clean out the people who are not interested in hearing from you, they're not opening up your emails. One, depending on which email client manager that you're using, whether that's MailChimp or ConvertKit or ActiveCampaign or Kartra or Infusionsoft, typically the pricing structure it goes higher the higher your list size is. So if you have 2,000 subscribers and under, MailChimp is free, but if you go above that, the price starts going up. So it makes a lot of sense financially as a smart business owner to make sure that you're cleaning out the people who, don't, who aren't opening your emails. You don't want them on there. They're not gonna buy from you anyway. Those aren't your people. So um, it's time to do a clean sweep. Now, before you do this, and I talk about this in another post because I feel like this stuff is important, but I'm trying to pull all of it together cohesively for you today. Um, you know, there's some certain steps that I recommend you take things like making sure that, you know, technology is wonky. So go ahead and send them an email, segment them out and say, Hey, cold subscribers. I noticed you haven't opened my emails for six months. Are you still there? Are you still listening? Are you just busy? Like did something happen in your life? Cause I get it. I had to take a break for a couple months from my business and be present with family and life happens. And so they might still be reading or, or seeing that you're sending them stuff and being flagging and saying, Oh, I want to go back. Some email clients are wrong. People are opening up the emails, but it isn't registering with the software. So you need to like be aware of that as well before you just clean them out. Right? So go ahead and send them an email and say, Hey, are you still there? Are you listening? Um, because I'm planning on letting go of your email because I don't, I don't want to show up in your inbox if you don't want to hear from me, right? I only want to talk to people who care about what I have to offer. And that is doing them a service and you a service because who likes a cluttered email box? Not me. And who likes hearing crickets? Not me. So clean up your email list. Make sure that you have people on there who are listening to, who are responding to you, who are opening your emails, who are engaging with your links. And that is going to do lots of good things for your business. And you're going to have a better gauge of who's actually interested in certain products. So make sure you're looking at your numbers, pay attention to your list and clean that baby up. All right. Number six, be consistent across social media. This is a very easy thing to fix. Are your colors consistent? Are you using several different types of pink, right? Go through and use the one hex code. It's a six digit color number and use that across Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest, not Pinterest, um, your Facebook, um, 
banners and make sure everything is that same correct color, right? And maybe it's on your blog, maybe you have bars or buttons, make sure it's all that same hex color code. That way it becomes your signature color and people are able to recognize it as, oh, this is Brittany talking to me, this is her color yellow, or this is her color blue, and I'm gonna stop my scroll because I tend to like what she has to talk about. Make sure you're also using your same headshot across all of your platforms. You might have looked different or your hair was a different color or something um, in, in this shot and now you have a new one and this goes along with freshening up your photos. Go ahead and freshen up your headshot across all of your platforms so that people know that you are you and this is the correct platform. Now, if you have different businesses, like maybe you have a personal page or you have um, a, um, a platform dedicated to a sub niche of something that you're doing, you might want a different headshot or a different logo representing that so that people don't get confused or miss opportunities to connect with you or buy from you because they were looking at the wrong platform, okay? So, and then make sure you have the same messaging, same cover banners, especially if you're promoting something. So if you have an opt-in or a freebie that you're wanting to get out there, maybe a challenge or a webinar, make sure the link is available across all your platforms. Don't have one freebie here and another freebie there and another freebie here. You know, I think people will start to get confused about what is she actually promoting and what is she doing and what is her focus. Make it super simple, super clear about what it is that you're about. At least right now in this season, you might have shifted or pivoted and people need to know what you're up to now. Very, very easy stuff, but so easy to let it drop to the bottom of our to-do list. And so if you want to take a day or a week and do some spring cleaning of your brain, these are six things, but here's the seventh. And this goes along with that consistency across social media. Make sure that all of your calls to action across your website, across your live videos, across your social media platforms, all of your links, that is a clear call to action of what you want them to do. And it doesn't have to be necessarily to buy something. Maybe it's to respond to a particular post. Maybe it is to watch a particular video. Maybe it is to um, donate to a certain cause. Maybe it is to opt into a particular challenge, right? So pushing one thing at a time is gonna be your best bet unless you have scaled to a place and you have the team to help accommodate multiple things in your business, okay? So if you're still starting out, and you've been at this for a little while, and you have done some evolving, some growing, some pivoting, it's time to make sure that everything is consistent. Take a day or take a week, depending on what your pace of life is, to systematically go through each of these steps. And you might wanna take one day for each of these things. Maybe you take one day one and clean up your brand message, day two, freshen up your photos. You can do it with an iPhone and use portrait mode, right? Just make sure that they're well lit, that they're nice, and it's clean and clear across all of your platforms. Day three, make sure you're still clear on your people's pain points. Are you still talking to them where it hurts and offering the, them a solution to eliminate that pain in their life? People don't like to feel pain. So number four, maybe you take a day and you go through your website, you hide some pages, you make some pages visible again, fix your links, all of that good stuff, update your copy, update your dates, in your copyright, in your privacy policy page, in your terms and conditions. Um, make sure all that's squared away. Day five, do a, a list cleanup. Send out that first email, and then whoever responds, make sure that they're saved, and then get rid of everybody else. Very easy to do. Um, number six, take a day, look at all your social media platforms, make sure everything is consistent across them. Your colors your links, your headshots, right? Your cover and banner images on everything. Um, and then number seven, make sure everything feels clear in the call to action. Do people know what action you want them to take when they encounter you for the first time and are getting to know you, right? The top of your funnel. What's the first action? What's that first call to action you want them to take? All right, those are the seven ways I have started spring cleaning my brand. I just did a list cleanup. I have some fresh photos coming this weekend, hopefully, weather permitting. And um, I just made sure everything was consistent across social media about two weeks ago. And, um, and so I'm always listening, always clarifying pain points of what my people are, are struggling with or what they're working through. And um, this is something that if you haven't done this in a while, this is a really, really good step for you to just get 
back on solid footing, back on solid ground so you can continue to gain momentum in 2019 and hit some of those impact and income goals that you have set. Guys, I'm excited for you. I'm excited to spring clean your brains with you. That's it for today. I'm going to link the resources that I mentioned as well so you can have access to those. If you guys have any other questions about how to clean up your brand or make sure that's on point, please be sure to, to reach out, drop those questions. Um, and I am happy, happy, happy to respond and get you guys some clarity and forward motion there. That's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey, thanks for joining me in learning how to spring clean your brand, especially Marie Kondo style, because if it's not working for you in your brand and your business, it's time to thank it for its purpose that it served and let it go. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to do that thing that I mentioned earlier on in the video about how to fix your brand message in less than 60 seconds, you can click on that video right here. That's it for today. If you've enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow along and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.